So se fiwe. Uh, there are practices that we have as a church that uh, must not be taken for granted and that need to be understood why we do things the way we do them. Uh, those of you who have been here for long, you've never seen a, pro uh, a, a politician start at the pulpit to address you, have you? We've never had a politicians or anyone come for our fundraisings. In fact, we are satisfied with your offerings, true? So I wish to make a statement that we seek to distance ourselves from some of the things that are happening right now. First of all, a bad government is better than no government. But we must distance ourselves from bad governance. Our country is at the crossroads. Institu institu institutionalized corruption, perpetual lies, rampant ineptitude, and universal arrogance of this regime has brought this country on her knees. We distance ourselves from those who support it blindly. The rule of law has been forgotten. Court orders do not matter anymore. The president and the executive have failed to provide credible leadership that produces hope. Instead, Kenyans have sunk into despair and hopelessness so that in a sense, death has been preferable. The high rate of joblessness, of taxation, and pride of the president and all those who surround him force the younger generation popularly called Gen Z to take to the streets to protest this last week. They've successfully occupied the streets, the parliament, even churches, and now it is hashtag Occupy Everywhere. The Kenyan youth realizing from the Kenyan constitution that, and I quote the Kenyan constitution, all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya and that the people may exercise their sovereign power either directly or through their democratic, democratically elected representatives. They've decided to be represent, uh, uh, not to be represented after most of the members of the National Assembly voted in favor of the punitive and draconian finance bill 2024, which came at the heels of another one, the Finance Act 2023, against the interest of the Kenyans. People stormed the parliament and desecrated it to show that the, uh, that arm of government as well, the parliament, has failed us just like the executive. The government responded with force shooting to kill and maiming so many. Many innocent protesters have been harassed, abducted, ki kidnapped, tortured, and killed. Hundreds of Kenyans are mourning today. We stand with them. We stand with them for it could be us since they've committed no crime. I call upon Kenyans of goodwill to start with this generation, which is tribeless, leaderless, and partyless. I believe that the Lord is using them to purge this nation of corruption and wickedness, for it is only righteousness that exalts a nation. Though many of us differ with, this, with some of the means being employed to achieve the desired goal of forcing the president and his government to resign, yet we agree with their end. While we do not believe that the ed justifies the means like most pragmatics do, yet we have been left with no choice except to resist injustice and wickedness. We must resist the evil door because the government is now calling evil good and good evil. It is rewarding the corrupt and punishing the hardworking. You all know of the fertilizer scandal where the minister has been exonerated and the farmers left high and dry. God is against any regime that decrees iniquitous decrees and rights and the writers who keep writing oppression to turn aside the needy from the justice and to rob the poor of his people of their right, that widows may be their spoil and that they may make the fatherless their prey. The judgment has come and our prayer is that the Lord may be merciful to the nation and still give us peace even though we live in evil days. We should pray for justice to prevail. We should mourn and weep 
with those who have lost their dear ones in this struggle. We should support even financially when called upon to help those who have been injured and are writhing in pain in hospitals today. The clergy from different de denominations have flocked to State House this week. We must not stand with the institution of the church or denominational leaders and the ecumenical bodies who've been unable to offer light to the government. They've been accomplices. They've been unable to be the conscience of this country. Most of them are politicians who occupy ecclesiastical offices. They seem to be in aid for money. They've been going to the state house to cheer the president while he is plundering the country with his cronies so that they can get the crumbs from his table. Woe to the clergy, hypocrites, greedy, fulfill the lucre. They have their reward in full because judgment begins in the house of the Lord. The nation of Israel was destroyed by God into perpetual exile by the Assyrians because of their iniquity. Judah, the southern kingdom, was exiled in Babylon because of the evil in the land perpetuated by their kings and spiritual leaders. The Lord God is a holy God who will not blink at evil or turn blind eye to iniquity and injustices. In conclusion, dear brethren and friends, God is sovereign. It is our sovereign God who in providence ordains whatsoever comes to pass. We must be in prayer now than ever. We must not allow politicians to desecrate the altar of God while they worship their Baal and their mammon called money. We must never ever be a wash-wash tool for politicians who steal from the public and bring those money to churches so that they can be given back later by the back door. We must walk by faith and not by sight. We must renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great Savior, Jesus. He gave himself for us from all loss and to purify for himself a people, for his own possessions, who are zealous for good works. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no authority except that is from above. There is no, uh, no one who can be in a position of, of power or in office without your honoring. So, Lord, we look to you because we know that you are sovereign. You are the almighty God. Our nation is at crossroads, but we look to you for help. We pray, dear Lord that you will come and hear the cries of your people. We pray, dear Lord, that you will hear the cries of those who have lost their dear ones today, those who are mourning, those who are weeping, those who are uh, calling upon friends and relatives to contribute to pay hospital bills because of their dear ones who have been maimed. Oh, Lord, we look to you to comfort them. Comfort those who are weeping. Comfort those who have had their their dear ones killed, comfort those who are sick, comfort those who have been injured, comfort those families, dear Lord. Tears are flowing across the country because life has become unbearable in this land. Lord, you heard the cries of your people in Egypt and you did raise up a Moses and you raised him a leader like no other who led them from, from captivity the Egyptian captivity to the promised land. We look to you to do the same for our land, O oh Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that since it is righteousness that upholds a nation, you may raise up for us men and women who fear you, men and women who will uphold the rule of law, men and women who will fear you, men and women who care for the needy, who care for the afflicted, who care for those who are orphaned or the widows or the aliens in the land. We look to you, dear Lord, that you will raise up for us such as will be leaders who will be faithful to your word, who will be faithful to the law of God. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, you will help us, that we will not 
drift any further and fall into the precipice of anarchy. We pray that somehow you may prevail upon the current regime to see what needs to be done in the right way and in a way that is acceptable to Kenyans so that this country will not fall into uh, chaos, any further chaos and anarchy. We look to you, dear Lord, for we know that only your restraining hand is able to do this. No man, no worldly wisdom is able to accomplish this. Only you can, but we look to you. And our help comes from the Lord. Our, helps comes, our help comes from the living God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. You will not let our feet stumble. You will not let us be moved. Come, dear Lord, and help us. We pray also that uh, it will be in your grace that soon the IEBC will be reconstituted with faithful, godly commissioners. Men and women who fear you. Men and women who stand for justice. And we ask, O oh Lord, that this will be to usher in a new government that cares for its citizens. We pray also that our Lord, you will remember the so-called church in this land. They failed to preach the gospel. They have indeed been preaching money. They've been preaching everything else except the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. They've, they've abdicated their responsibility to teach the world council of God that you have given us in the scriptures. So we pray, oh dear Lord, as you purge the civil government, you may also purge the religious government. We know that these are your institutions, both the, go the civil government on the one hand and the church on the other hand. The two are separate because they have different mandates from you. So Lord, we pray then, that as we desire for good governance in, with the civil authorities, there would also be good governance in ecclesiastical authorities. May those who serve as pastors not be greedy for dishonest gain. May those of us who serve as pastors not be lovers of many. May we not be those who fall in to fill the lucre. Help us, dear Lord, to be willing to wait upon you to give us what? You provide for us. For you've said in your word that the labor is worthy his wages. But we need to be content with what you give us. So we pray that the church will be the beautiful bride of our Savior Christ. So that we will have white linen. Our righteous deeds would be obvious to the world. And in so doing, we will be the light of the world. We will be the salt of the world. The fruit of the Spirit would be obvious to the world and they will glorify the God in us and want to be as Christians as we are. But as it is, dear Lord, the church has filled the nation. The so-called church, which has really been more political than ecclesiastical. And we look to you, dear Lord, that you will intervene so that you will bring down any so-called church that does not represent the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. Any church bearing that holy name that is not the body of Christ, we pray, dear Lord, that you may bring it down and cause that those that are right will be raised up and you will raise up righteous leaders, righteous pastors who care for your glory and who care for your, for your holiness and who care for your ship, the flock of Jesus Christ whom you ransomed by your own blood. Please visit this land, Lord, for the glory of your Lord. Visit us, dear Lord, as we cry to you to help us. For we know that apart from you, we can do nothing. Come, almighty God. We, we, we cry to you for we know that only you can deliver us from the present problems, from the present crisis. Come and show yourself mighty for the sake of your people in this land. Or did you not tell and assure Abraham your servant that even if there were 10 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah, you would not destroy it? Surely, Lord, 
There are many in this country who belong to you and who are called by your name, who are more than 10 in Sodom and Gomorrah. Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked, O Lord? But will you not show yourself merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness? Lord, we look to you to help us. To help us, Lord, that uh, we will not sink any further into chaos. If there is any officer that needs to be removed from his office, you can do it by a fiat. You can do that just like by the word of your power you created this universe. You can remove any man by your word, just like you will destroy the Antichrist by the word from your mouth. So do the same, dear Lord, for the sake of your glory, for the sake of your church, for the sake of the purity of the bride of Christ, for the sake of the elect, for the sake of the people whom you've ransomed by the blood of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen.